with GMO and are going to Congress to try to prevent them from telling people what's in their products. We want you to know what's in our products. We want you to know about things like BioPQQ. Look it up. Look at the reviews. See what this does for people, what these clinical studies have shown. See what other people are saying with reviews that are on our site. Uh, we don't hide our ingredients. We're proud of them. I would think that people in a market environment, whether they're selling food, whether they're selling supplements, they would want to put stuff in for a competitive advantage that consumers would want. But that's not the way our food system typically works. That's why you need to be careful about what you get. That's why you need to get supplementation. They've taken good stuff like iodine out of the food supply. They try to sneak in things like GMO. They know people don't want, and they don't want to have that put on the label. But we are proud of what are in, what's in our ingredients. Again, you can get DNA Force as well as Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine, both 25% off with this hourly special that's at our store. And again, there's a lot of... Uh, Discounts still set up on things that we have not sold out of yet. Brain Force, 20% off. Silver Bullet, 20% off. Oxy Powder and Secret 12, that's our B12 formulation. Those are both 15% off. Free shipping. We are going to uh, keep that through midnight tonight. And Alex has extended these Money Bomb specials until we hit the million dollar mark. But we have a special just for this hour. 25% off. Survival Shield X2 and DNA Force. Wayne, just before they had the debate, there was an article from McClatchy that was put up on the Drudge Report. And I would think that the GOP candidates would look at the Drudge Report, that Jake Tapper or CNN would look at it. But, of course, there was no mention whatsoever about the revelations that the U.S. military trained the top ISIS commander. And this follows a long train of revelations that have been coming out for a couple of years that we've been covering. Do you've been covering? Uh, New American has an article about this. They say, first... There was admission that Obama's anti-ISIS coalition had funded and armed various terrorist groups in Syria that went on to become ISIS. That was Joe Biden admitting that when he spoke at Harvard. He admitted that. Then we had the uh, U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman Martin Dempsey said in Senate testimony that Sunni Arab dictators and Obama's anti-ISIS coalition were not only supporting ISIS, they were funding it. Then we found out from a Freedom of Inf Information Act uh, request in 2012, the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency pointed out that Western powers and their Islamic dictator allies were supporting Islamic terrorists and that they wanted to see a fundamentalist Islamic state created in East Syria. Finally, we had the former chief of the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, go on television, spill the beans on Obama's willful support to Islamic terrorists while distancing himself from the policies. And so this last revelation that we got from McClatchy, which came the day of the debate and was completely ignored about how we trained the top ISIS commander, all of this is being completely ignored, and we have to do everything to get rid of ISIS. Your comments, Wayne. Well, not only that, yesterday we had General Austin, the, the commander of the U.S. Special Operations Command, when asked uh, during uh, his testimony before the Congress, uh, how many of these moderate Syrian rebels have you trained? And he said four or five. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, you know, we've spent hundreds of millions of dollars on training these so-called moderate rebels in Syria, and he said we've trained four or five. Yeah. <laughs> there, we have not trained any mod. There are no moderate uh, Syrian rebels. <laughs> there may be a few, but they're living courtesy of the U.S. taxpayer in four-star hotels in Istanbul and Ankara, Turkey. Uh, they're not fighting the, the any wars against Assad's government from the, the bar at the Intercontinental Hotel in Istanbul. Uh, so... Uh, we had Petraeus the other day, the convicted criminal, David Petraeus, mm -hmm. uh, suggested the U.S. ally with al-Qaeda. He says it's just, what, a week before the 9-11 observances. And he says we should ally with al-Qaeda to fight ISIL. Uh, I got news for this uh, General Petraeus, who, who, who was nothing more than a, a pencil sharpening general, a paper pusher. Uh, he didn't see much combat. And when he did see get close to it in Iraq, he helped actually train what became Al Qaeda in Iraq, and that morphed into when they went into Syria. That morphed into uh, ISIL or ISIS, uh, which means there is no uh, difference between Al Qaeda and ISIL. Uh, he he apparently doesn't know that. Maybe that's why he became the head of the CIA. 
my dog would do a better job as a CIA director than David <laughs> Petraeus. Yet we hear uh, uh, John McCain and Lindsey Graham always referring to this convicted criminal Petraeus as my, they always say, our dear General Petraeus. I'm waiting for the three of them to go s start shopping for furniture together at Ikea. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the the, the thing is, and, and we the current director of the CIA is even worse, John Brennan, who was the CIA direct, uh, uh, station chief in Riyadh in the 90s. He's rumored to have converted. You know, he went to he went to Fordham, so he went to a Jesuit uh, college. But the word is he actually converted to uh, to. Uh, now, there's a real question that should be asked. Uh, he a former FBI agent said that Brennan converted to Islam. And he was actually paid the pil made the pilgrimage to Mecca. Really? really? Yeah. So his name should wow. be El Haj John Brennan. He <laughs> made the pilgrimage, and uh, and he's the single handedly has has uh, uh, given the Saudis everything they want. Uh, he's he's been providing uh, weapons to uh, ISIL in Iraq and Syria and Al Qaeda and uh, at the Al Nusra Front and the Khorasan Group. All these radicals. And, and yet, when asked how many moderates <laughs> the U.S. has trained in Syria, the head of the Special Operation Command said four or five. That's because all the training and money is going to the, to the ISIL group, the beheaders, the rapists, the yes. kidnappers, yes. Uh, uh, the murderers, and, and people that blow up these, these ancient uh, relics that have survived thousands of years but just can't survive a, 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 another CIA-funded group. Well, of course, we have been allied uh, since they created the petrodollar. We've been allied with Saudi Arabia, the most repressive, the most fundamentalist of any of the Islamic regimes, the Wahhabis, Wahhabis there in uh, Saudi Arabia. They have more beheadings than ISIS. And with everybody being concerned about the humanitarian crisis that's going on with this war in Syria, did you hear anything in the GOP about Saudi Arabia's invasion of Yemen and targeting civilians in Yemen, their southern neighbor. I didn't hear anything at all about that, uh, Wayne. No, and we and we know the Saudis have been lobbying against the release of those 28 pages mm -hmm. uh, and, and helping them as APAC because when Lindsey Graham said it, it'll harm U.S. relations with other allies in the region, well, I've heard through the great mind people have read that report. The other allies he's referring to is Kuwait. Remember the country we, uh, the old man Bush went in and saved from Saddam Hussein, Qatar, where we have two major U.S. military bases, and of course Israel, which is a absolute ally uh, of Saudi Arabia because yes. they want to jointly attack Iran. Uh, the truth be said, Iran is one of the most moderate uh, nations in the Middle East. It should be our natural ally. They're fighting yes. ISIL. They're fighting Al Qaeda. They always have. They helped. They try to help us fight Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. I don't think we took full advantage of that offer because uh, Cheney and his neocons would never do any kind of business with Iran. So uh, it's a it's it's a mess. You know when Donald Trump says our you know our our policy in the Middle East is a mess. He's he's right. He just has the wrong he has the wrong solutions. I'm afraid for it yes. uh, because he doesn't understand the mess. But he does at least he understands it's a mess. He doesn't know why there's a mess and what caused the mess. Well, certainly, what you're talking about with Iran should be one of our natural allies. Of course, you know everybody wants to think about. Israel and the Arabs as being antithetical to each other, two opposites. But as we see over and over and again, what is sold to us as polar opposites are always on the same side. That's the way our government, the way the CIA operates things. And so, as you pointed out, Israel and uh, Saudi Arabia, the Arabs are, are working uh, to try to take out Iran and, and other groups. And they're working against the best interests of the United States. But, of course, Saudi Arabia has the leverage over us of the petrodollar. That's the way that uh, Nixon and Kissinger set all this up. Once they took us off the gold standard after uh, Bretton Woods, then they said, okay, our new leverage is going to be the petrodollar. We're going to work with the Saudis. And the Saudis are joined at the hip with the CIA. And I think it's very important for people to understand we've had situations with the Iranians. They, they want to portray them in the mainstream media as being these radical, crazy people. And yet we shot down a civilian airliner of Iran and they didn't do anything about it. What would we have done if it had been reversed? Of course, we know exactly what would have happened. 
many people don't understand what's going on in Iran. They don't understand the history that we had prior to the Ayatollah Khomeini coming to power as a reaction to the Shah of Iran that we put in there. And, of course, you know, we overthrew their government under Mossadegh, or the uh, CIA coup. They had an incredibly repressive regime. Uh, Wayne, when I was in college, there were a lot of Iranian students and the uh, engineering curriculum that were there. They were protesting with uh, masks over their face because they were concerned about repercussions at home with the Savak. And I said, well, what's, that, what's that about? And they were telling me about what the Savak, who was trained by the CIA, what they were doing at home. And it's like... I can't believe that I, at that point in time, that was kind of my awakening as to how repressive and brutal our government can be with these uh, coups and the and governments that they institute there. So people, Americans have no understanding of what happened in Iran prior to the takeover of the American embassy. They don't have a historical context. That's correct. And uh, I mean, you look at the history of U.S. Middle East policy and they talk about blowback, and we certainly saw the blowback in so many respects. Uh, the, the Supporting the Mujahideen against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan, when in fact that was the breeding ground where, uh, where Osama bin Laden and his cohorts became so powerful. Uh, th there was never any issue between them and the Saudis because uh, the Saudis uh, would pay them money so they would never attack inside the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and we've been just led astray by all these uh, bought and paid for politicians and the media. The media has been absolutely uh, uh, disgusting on this. And, and now we see the media, instead of asking these candidates during these debates legitimate questions, we see basically what was predicted by the, uh, the 1970s movie Network. Uh, the, the presidential campaign has been turned into a reality TV show where you don't have political people behind uh, the scenes, uh, you know, coming up with the questions. you got Hollywood directors saying, get the camera on this one, get the yeah. camera on that one. And it's just a big Hollywood production. Uh, it's, it's a complete waste of time. Uh, I, I wouldn't even watch that debate because, um, you know, if I want to see that, I'll go back and watch rewatch the movie network which uh was way ahead of its time <laughs> you know it was interesting one of the one of the stories that came out that i thought was pretty funny wayne was uh bernie sanders they had some of the tweets that he was putting out trolling the republicans while this was going on and i i, I strongly disagree with bernie sanders i'm not supporting bernie sanders as a presidential candidate but what he had to say about the gop debate was spot on this is what he had to say Wayne. he said war 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 when do we get to the other major priority? Tax breaks for billionaires. <laughs> then he said, Trump, what a pleasant, humble person. Can't stop saying kind and, and uh, generous things about his fellow Republicans. And he says, uh, finally, he says, okay, let's vote for Reagan. He sounds better than any of these other guys. I mean, that's basically it. Personal invectives, mostly from Donald Trump. And that's what Jake Tapper was doing. He said, he'd come to people and say, well, you know, Donald Trump said this about you. What, what do you think about that? I mean, it's like some kind of a silly high school uh, instigator, you know, trying to uh, pit one person against the other. But then the rest of it was Ronald Reagan and let's go to war with the rest of the world. Right. And it's no different than what Fox did in the last debate. They're both seeing huge ratings as a result of these debates. But yeah. people are not being educated. What should happen right. is the debate should go back to the League of Women Voters. It should go back into a regular political debate format, uh, uh, standard debate rules should apply. Uh, if they have a problem with that, go back and look at the Nixon-Kennedy debate, what was moderated by Howard K. Smith. That can be done again. It isn't going to get ratings. It's not going to entertain people, but it's going to maybe start educating people about uh, the choices they have in the next election, because people right now are being entertained and not educated. And, 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 and I, I believe that in the, in the older debates uh, from years gone past, the networks ate the advertising time. They, they actually ran the debate without uh, a, a commercial breaks because they thought it was uh, in the public interest to educate the voting public. That's all been lost with this crazy uh, Hollywood. Uh, because you got to realize both Fox News and CNN are not owned by news companies. They're owned by... Uh, entertainment uh, conglomerates. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. And, uh, time Four or five of them now. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, it was it was reported, and they were even admitting it before, that what they wanted were was conflict so they could get some sound bites, so they could get an audience. It is a reality TV show. I call it Celebrity Big Brother. Uh, every four years, we get to elect another big brother, 
And uh, this is just just like that structure where they take one guy goes out every couple of weeks. You know, we've already had uh, uh, Rick Perry get voted out of Celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> so now we right. will see this this gradual attrition, and this can go on quite some time with this large a field. Uh, they can they can be taking.